What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 11 of our Python for Finance tutorial series. In the previous tutorial, basically in the tutorials, we've kind of created, we've started getting our data ready to create our labels. We created our helper function that's going to let us do that. And now what we actually want to do is, is map this function to our data frame to a, basically a new column. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So creating a new function here, I'm going to define extract feature sets. It's going to take one parameter, it's going to be the ticker. Um, then we're going to say tickers df equals this function up here, basically, because it returns ticker and df. Paste. Good. So now we're going to define this new column, and this new column is going to have, is the value for this new column will be the mapped answer of this, basically. This takes args. The args that it's going to take are going to be the seven-day prices in the future, or the seven-day percent changes for those prices in the future. So... We're going to say uh, df, we'll do this tar target.format ticker. So basically it'll be the, you know, XOM target. That's going to equal the list of the map of the function by cell hold. And then from here we pass param parameters to this function. That's just how mapping works. So now we're going to pass, um, hmm, it would be really convenient to ha have a way to iter iterate this. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know of a good way to iterate this one. Because we've iterated the days here, which is great. Um, hmm. If someone knows how to iterate this list, I'm about to show you why I'm so bummed out at the moment. Um, do post it below because I am blanking. So the, what we're going to have to do is just do this. Oh, this is going to be, this is so gross. I thought we were past this, Harrison. Oh, gosh. Okay, so rather than this, it will be like one day. Um, and then comma, enter. And then I'm just going to copy this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is so gross. Someone's going to, someone save us. Someone save us from this madness. I feel horrible. I feel horrible. I'll take a shower after this or something because this is just bad. So now we're going to say, okay, so, <clears throat> so this creates a new column and generates buy, sell, or hold. So at this point, we actually could print out the data frame and we'd see we have a new column called, you know, whatever the ticker is, underscore target, and that will be either a, uh, a one, a negative one, or a zero. And that's the, the class, so to speak, for, for this, because we're going to use scikit-learn in this case. Um, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll bring that other thing up later. So now we're going to say vals equals, um, basically this will be, ba or we're, let me just write it out, and then I'll explain why we're doing this. Um, so vals will be basically this exact thing. That dot values dot... Again, two list. I'm not positive I'm going to need this here, but I'm going to do it just so we don't have errors. String underscore vowels is going to equal um, string i for i in vowels. And then we're going to print print um, let's just do data spread colon comma counter string vowels. So counter just requires us to deal with strings. I'm not quite sure why. Um, you should be able to use integers, but whatever. So now what we need to do is go up to the very top here and we need to do a from uh, from collections import counter. I'm going to go ahead and cut this and do this because we want it to be alphabetical order. Um, okay, counter string vowels. Okay, so that'll give us the distribution. Now, why is the distribution important? Remember, in the previous tutorial, I said, you know, we've got basically three classes here. So just with random choice, we should, in theory, get 33% accuracy. But that's not necessarily true. First of all, stocks don't, on average, go sideways, right? On average, stocks go up in price. So we might want, we might over, over time need to tweak this number so it's it's relatively even between buy, sell, and hold. Like basically, like for example, if we have 3,000 rows of data, chances are 1,500 of them are buy, uh, 800 of them are 
sell and the rest are 800 of them are sell and the rest are hold or something like that okay so chances are most of them are going to be buys um so it's not going to be a perfect spread we want to see what the spread is because then when we finally do get how accurate is our classifier we can ask it well is that any better than if our classifier just predicted buy 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 because that's the question so if you can't beat the a, a like a constant buy uh, then clearly that's signaling to you you should be someone who just buys and holds in the market. So so anyway, data spread, counter valves, cool. So now we've got that information. Now we're going to go ahead and do is df.fill na 0 and plays equals true just to handle NAs. I like to just sprinkle these fill NAs and drop NAs as I'm doing things because it does help. <laughs> so now df is going to be uh, df.replace this is one that I do not think has an in place equals true, so that's why I'm redefining it. np.inf, um, whoops, it's a list of options. np.inf and also negative np.inf, and we're gonna replace those with np.nan. So if we had any prior NAs, we're gonna call them zero because those would be like percent changes or whatever. And in this case, what we're doing is we are um, going to replace the infinite infinite changes, i.e. when price basically goes, you know, basically if, if we went from like zero to suddenly having a price, well, the percent change from zero to a number is problematic. So we're going to replace that with np.nan. Um, and in fact, uh, yeah, we'll do that. And now what we're going to do is df.drop an a, and then in this case, we'll do in place equals true. Okay. So, so we've mapped that column, we've handled for crazy values, great. So, um, so now what I want us to do is create the actual, because basically at the end of the day, we need to have the feature sets and the labels. So now what we're gonna do is create basically the feature sets and the labels, and we can pretty much do that separately. So we're gonna say DF vowels, these will be like the, just, just the values. Because um, we've def we've created some of these new columns. So, so for example, if you accidentally pass future values, especially if we passed all the values in the next seven days to the classifier as one of the features, the classifier is going to learn really quick to just pay attention to those columns. So you generally want to be very explicit when it comes to which columns get to be the feature sets when it comes to machine learning. Otherwise, you're going to get really high accuracy and you're going to think, oh, I'm going to be a baller for life. And it's not true. So ticker for ticker in tickers. So we got the, all the, the plausible tickers here. And tickers is just the prices. That's it. It's not normalized yet, but it, it will be. Un momento dot PCT change. Boom. Normalized. Not only is it normalized, it actually gives us a little bit more information because now it's not just um, today's value, it's today's value as opposed to yesterday. So it's actually a percent change just one day. So it's not percent change from the beginning, it's percent change from like yesterday. So if you graphed it, it would just be mostly a zigzag kind of sideways graph. Now, um, okay, so we've got that. Now DF vowels equals Again, we're using percent change, so we're going to have these infinites. So we're going to say uh, df, I'm just going to copy this, df underscore vowels dot, yes, dot replace. And rather than np.nan, we actually, we're going to go with zero. And then we're going to say df vowels dot fill na with zero in place equals true. Just in case something else goes hinky here, we're just going to say, yeah, just Fill it with zeros at this point because it should have some data there by now. Now what we're going to say is finally our X's and our Y's in general, you have X and Y. Like this is how it's depicted. Your capital X are your feature sets, your lowercase Y. Sometimes it'll be people will use uppercase Y. It doesn't matter. Um, that's your labels. Generally X feature sets, Y labels. The target, the class is Y. Feature sets are the things that describe it. In our case, price changes, percent changes daily. So now we're going to say capital X equals DF underscore vowels. Yes, dot values. And then Y is DF, whatever that target was. So basically this. Dot values. And in fact, let's see. 
vowels. We probably could just use vowels here, but I think we want it to be a NumPy array, and then I can't remember if this is necess necessarily to to list. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. That's kind of redundant, so you might want to take that out. Anyway, you can uh, answer that question on your own time if you'd like. X, Y, D, F, I'll space those out. So now we return the feature sets, the labels, and the data frame. Just in case we want to reference the data frame for some reason, we'll return that as well. Now, um, at this point, we've got the feature sets, we've got the labels, we're ready for machine learning. That's what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Uh, also, let me just, let me just run this real quick. Let's make sure I don't have an error. And then I'll let you guys go. Sorry for the, just like I said, I, I like to do syntax errors sometimes. Exactly, I know. Name error, I is not defined. How are you gonna tell me this? Oh, <laughs> see, I told you, this is why I gotta run this stuff. Okay, so in this case, we don't have I. Right, this is after we just like copy and pasted that line. Oh, this is so gross. This is this is why we need to fix this. Somebody, somebody save us. Oh my gosh. Okay, so requirement. So let's go ahead and spell it right. Requirement. Wow, it's a good good thing I ran this, huh? This would have give us hell later. Okay, so we can see the spread here, even at point, you know, for two percent. It's actually pretty. A pretty good spread. That's a good starting number then. So yeah, so 1713, 1456, and then 1108. Cool. Um, ideally, these should be perfectly even, but there's pretty much no number that's going to give us that because for different companies, it'll be different numbers. So certain companies rise a whole lot more, like eBay and Exxon kind of do a lot of wiggling as opposed to like Apple just kind of goes up over time. So, so anyway, at least so far. Um, okay, great. So that's where we are for now. In the next tutorial, we'll do the machine learning. Questions, comments below. I'll see you next time.